Hi guys, Darth Deuce here, back from the Star Wars figure review. Uh, today, taking a look at a much older figure. Um, just today, I got a couple of older figures that uh, I've kind of been hunting down for a while now. And uh, this first one here is uh, Maris Brood from The Force Unleashed. She was released as part of, like I guess, like The Force Unleashed subline that was part of the 30th anniversary collection. And uh, I'm a big fan of the uh, Force Unleashed, so I'm always happy to get more unique characters from that game. And I especially wanted to track down uh, Maris as uh, I want to eventually collect all of the unique named uh, Dark Sith, Dark Sider characters that have been released in three and three quarters from Hasbro, uh, which probably never fully achieve that because some of the hardest ones to get are very expensive, but uh, Maris here was one that was definitely within reach and I was able to get, I think, a pretty decent deal for her. So I went ahead and got her. She arrived here super fast and uh, I'm pretty happy with it. It's a pretty cool figure. Um, but yeah, released in like 2007, I think that's when 30th anniversary was around, I think. Um, but yeah, I don't have the packaging because I got her loose. But uh, taking a look at the figure, she is one of the uh boss battles i think in every version of the game but i'm not sure some versions of the games had different bosses uh, i played the game on psp and the psp version had uh kazdan paratus as a uh boss battle but i don't think he was a boss battle in other versions of the game but i'm pretty sure uh maris brood was consistent between all of the versions of the game and she is the Post Order 66 Apprentice of Shock T. They did release a Force Unleashed version of Shock T. I would like to get that figure at some point, but uh, I've seen that figure goes for some crazy prices that I'm just not willing to pay, like ever, for that character. So if I ever get a good deal, maybe I'll pick it up, but otherwise, it'll be probably a long time before I ever get that, if I ever get it. But I really like the uh, paint on this figure, it's pretty good. The head sculpt, I think, as well, looks really nice. Um, and I think the face paint looks pretty good considering this is long before face uh, face printing. I like the uh, red pupil eyes, like dark side eyes with the red kind of underneath the eyes there. And the eyebrows I think are painted pretty well. And then she's got these little like horn thingies on her, on her head and poking through her hair. That looks good. And the hair is itself pretty interesting. It's like all braided. She's got these like braided loops that hang down. There's even like this braided bit that uh, goes around her uh, neck there, which is uh, kind of interesting. The Those bits of the hair are slightly pliable plastic. They won't, they'll kind of get out of the way, but they're not the toughest, so I would kind of avoid moving those as much as you can. The rest of the figure, outfit-wise, is actually pretty simple because she's not wearing a whole lot, uh, especially on the top. She's not wearing a whole lot. But uh, what is there looks good, and it's a little hard to tell on my camera, but uh, she's got like this palish skin, and they put a wash over all of the skin tone, the revealed skin areas of the figure to bring out the sculpted detail, and I assume maybe it'll make her look a little more grungy and dirty because, you know, she's been living off of the Felucia for God knows how long and whatnot and, suc and succumbed to the dark side, so you're going to be a bit... Uh, grungy looking i guess but looks pretty good the fingers she's got like this red like markings i don't know what this is actually supposed to be she's some sort of alien but you got like the red markings that she had on her fingers in the sh in the game which always was kind of like weird to me but it is a kind of unique bit to her design she does have a couple belts on the go with some nice painted details of buckles and the different little thingies on her belt there and the pants are pretty basic. She has this little strap all around one of the thighs with this little thing hanging down that's painted in black. I don't know what that's supposed to be. She has some nice looking uh, shin guards. They're in sort of a glossier plastic, or not plastic, glossier paint to differentiate it a bit from the rest of the figure's clothing. The straps are actually fully painted. You've got brown and then the buckles are separately painted as well, which is pretty cool. And you've got the shoes or the boots that have the armor kind of continuing down on there. And two peg holes at the bottom of the feet. But uh, yeah, pretty cool looking figure. Um, definitely unique. I don't think, I don't know what, I didn't do my research and it's been a long time. I don't know what alien she's supposed to be. Um, I don't think she's a Zabrak. I guess maybe she could be, but I don't think so. But uh, we never, it's pretty unique looking character for the shelf. 
because there hasn't really been any other characters like her. In terms of articulation, she has pretty good articulation from the waist up, but then isn't so great from the waist down. But she has a ball joint at the head, so you can move it around a bit, mainly rotation. There's not really much up and down or pivot. It's mostly just a rotation. A single hinge of the elbows, though, move really well. There's nothing hindering them. She also has ball hinged uh, elbows, which I'm actually surprised by because um, I think this arm's backwards. I'm surprised by because uh, usually with female characters back in this time period, and especially with female characters who have their arms bare, no clothing, uh, they like to just not give elbow joints. Like Darth Talon came out actually after this figure and she didn't have elbow joints, but this figure does pretty whack. Uh, way back in this day of Hasbro Star Wars figures, they had really weird logic with their articulation schemes. Some figures would get uh, really good range of motion and really good articulation, and then other figures would get like the most random cuts to articulation, like not having elbows, or you'll see some of that in a second. She also has swivel cuts at the uh, forearms, also kind of surprising, but appreciated. That makes posing with lightsabers a lot better. And one thing that's really interesting, I don't know if I've seen this on any other three and a quarter Star Wars figure. She doesn't have a waist cut, I assume, so they could sculpt the belts or whatever, but she has a cut just below her chest, um, which it works, you know, rotation. is a little weird looking because a human's torso doesn't turn this way. The, whatever, the torso twists. And obviously, even with a waist level, that's not as accurate, but at least the waist level, the whole torso goes with it. Here, it's just the top, and it does look kind of weird, but I guess it is nice, the articulation was still built in somehow. Swivel hips, which is a bit unfortunate for a lightsaber rolling character, but this is pretty normal for the time. However, no knee articulation, but they gave her articulated ankles with hinges and rotation. Uh, I always think this is so weird. I have other figures from this time period where they did this, where they'd give them swivel hips, ankle articulation, but then give them no knees. I just don't really get it. Like, if you're going to articulate the ankles, why don't you articulate the knees? It just doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, you can get her with the hinges and the ankles. You can achieve, like, wider stances, I guess. But aside from that, there's not much you can do with it. So I don't get the logic there. Um, and then you all, you will also notice she is kind of sculpted to be kind of in this... I don't know how to explain it. This pose where she's kind of slit, like she's not standing straight up. She's got kind of an attitude to her, which I like. I like that. It adds, uh, makes the figure look a bit more natural on the shelf and gives her some personality. But still, you have that kind of pre-sculpting and uh, it can that can also sort of limit some posability. It doesn't really come to play too much, but uh, it's something that's worth noting, I guess. But overall, she looks really good and she articulates okay. She actually articulates better than I was expecting her to, if I'm being honest. Uh, in terms of accessories, I think the figure comes with a display base that has her name on the front. I don't have that. That didn't wasn't didn't come with a figure when I got it, but I could care less about that. But she does come with her signature. Oh, oops, with her signature lightsabers. She does have pretty unique sabers because the hilts are very like police nightstick like. You've got the main hilt, and you've got these extra handles on the side. Uh, I don't think any other character has lightsabers like these in like all of Star Wars. I think. Uh, I got some nice red blades. They're very like light red. They're like almost a pinkish red. They're not like so light that they are pink. They're still red, but they're very light. Uh, but I like that. It adds some variety to the shelf of dark side characters. And it's a little hard to tell, but the paint apps on the hilt are actually also pretty good. It's uh, almost bronzish. It's not like fully gray. It's almost kind of bronzish looking, looking. And they also have like a black wash on the rim of the details. So I think that looks pretty cool. And she can hold them just fine. You can have her hold them like just normal sabers if you want. Um, but that's boring. We want her to hold them like she does in the game and with the alternate handles like so. And you can do that. My only real complaint with this is because of the way the angle that her wrists are molded in and she doesn't have hinges at the wrists. She holds them kind of awkwardly like over here the saber's blade is touching her arm, like she'd be cutting her arm off right now. And it's the same thing on the other side. Um, obviously it doesn't matter too much. You can still achieve the looks it's fine enough and it's a figure, so it's not actually cutting her arm off or anything like that, but it can look a little not great looking um, and can be a little bit annoying getting the proper looking look with her saber like that. But you know, it's not too bad. 
you can always have her not holding both like that. I might have to do something like this where she's holding one out and then has the other one flipped around. But looks pretty cool overall. Um, aside from that, not much else to talk about aside from to do a real quick comparison. I don't really have anything to compare with. I don't have that shock to you, like I said. But uh, here she is with, I think, the only other star killer I have that was released during that time period so far. I still have to hunt down a good amount of those star killers. But here is the Sith Stalker from the uh, Evolution 2 pack. So they look pretty cool together, even though, well, you technically you could battle her looking like this if you wanted to. It was depending on whatever costume you want to use in the game. She's a little shorter than him, which makes sense. Usually the female characters skew a little shorter. But I think she scales pretty good. But overall, I think this is a pretty cool figure. It definitely has its issues. It's not perfect, don't get me wrong. But especially considering how old it is, it's still pretty solid. Uh, I think if you are a fan of The Force Unleashed, or you're like me, and you just like collecting the different uh, Darksiders, then I definitely recommend picking up this figure. I wouldn't pay crazy prices for it. Um, when all is said and done, I got mine for $30 Canadian loose, which I think, in my opinion, for how old the figure is, and for Force Unleashed being popular or not, I felt that was a pretty good deal. I felt that was worth it. And that is probably around the price that I recommend picking up at if you can find it. She doesn't usually go for too expensive. You can shop around and you probably even find her carded for almost around that price if you wait a bit or keep your eye on listings on eBay and whatnot. Um, you can probably get a good deal on this figure. So keep a lookout if you're something you're interested in. But yeah, overall, I do recommend it. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And I'll see you all in the next video. May the Force be with you.